Hello and welcome back to my newest SQL Server Quickie. In my last SQL Server Quickie I have talked about the optimistic isolation level with committed snapshot isolation. In today's SQL Server Quickie I want to talk about the isolation level, snapshot isolation, which is also an optimistic isolation level that SQL Server offers you. Snapshot isolation offers you in addition a read stability. When you read the same data multiple times within your transaction, you will always get back the same data, the data that was valid at the beginning of your transaction. As a side effect, you can have so-called update conflicts as you will see in the demonstration. But in the first step, let's switch over to the flip chart where I want to describe this isolation level in more detail to you. Let's talk now about the transaction isolation level snapshot. Snapshot isolation provides you always the version which was valid at the beginning of your transaction. Imagine now we have again a value of A, B, C and that value of A, B, C is changed to X, Y, Z. In that case, the old value is again copied over to the version store which is held in DempDB. When we have now another transaction which reads some data, a select statement, and we run that select statement in the isolation level, snapshot isolation, then we get back the value which was valid at the beginning of our transaction. Imagine the value which was valid was the value of ABC, means we get back the value of ABC. When afterwards that transaction commits and the value XYZ is the new value, then the select statement is still not able to see that new value because the value which was valid at the beginning of that transaction was ABC. Means when you read again within that transaction, you again get back the value of ABC. Means as you can see here, serializable provides you a read stability in an optimistic way without locking. Of course, when you afterwards want to change that value to FGH, it's not possible anymore because there is already a newer version and therefore SQL Server generates you here a so-called update conflict means SQL Server just rolls back that transaction and returns you the error number 39. 60 and therefore you also have to react on that error number when you run your transactions in the isolation level snapshot isolation. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where I want to show you how easy it is to get into an update conflict with snapshot isolation. In the first step you also have to enable snapshot isolation for your specific database. Otherwise, you are not allowed to use this new isolation level in your transaction. After we have enabled snapshot isolation for our database, we switch over to a second session where I start again an update statement against the table production dot product. I'm changing here the old value of 750 to a new value of 1000. Therefore, the old value of 750 is again copied over to the version store. After we have established our banding transaction, I will switch over to another session. In this session, I will set the transaction isolation level to snapshot isolation. That's the first code change that you need in your applications. You have to explicitly request this new isolation level. After we have set our isolation level to snapshot isolation, I begin a new transaction and I read the record that we are currently changing in the other transaction. You will get back here transparently the old version of 750 
directly from the version store that is stored in DampDB. Let's switch now back and commit our writing transaction. Our new value is now 1000, but when you read again the record in the other session, you still see the old version of 750. You have now a read stability. With read committed snapshot isolation, you will see here the new value of 1000. With snapshot isolation, you see here the old value of 750. The value that was valid at the beginning of your transaction. SQL Server provides you here a transaction based versioning. When you now try to update that record in your transaction, it will lead to an update conflict and SQL Server returns you the error number 3960. SQL Server tells you that you wanted to update a record where already a newer version is available. In our case, the version with the value of 1000. Therefore, you have to react on this error message number in your application and retry your transaction. That's the second code change you need to implement. Therefore, enabling and using snapshot isolation is not really transparent to your applications. In this SQL Server Quickie, I have introduced the transaction isolation level snapshot isolation to you. As you have seen, snapshot isolation also offers you a read stability without holding any shared logs until the end of the transaction. SQL Server uses again internally the version store to store the old versions that other transactions are referring to. One of the side effects of snapshot isolation is that you can run into so-called update conflicts. Therefore, you need some application changes so that you react on this new error number from SQL Server. Snapshot isolation is therefore not really transparent to your applications like read committed snapshot isolation. I hope that you have enjoyed this SQL Server Quickie and I'm already looking forward to welcome you next month again. Stay tuned.